Every spring around Vancouver Island and along the coast of BC, the ocean suddenly turns turquoise. Why is that, Connell? Oh, well, <laughs> there's no glamorous way of saying it. It's a lot of fish sperm, also called milt. Today, we are talking about the herring spawn. As the season begins to change in BC, one of our most abundant fish species migrates from the offshore waters to nearshore bays and estuaries to spawn. It's the Pacific herring, and this spawn produces one of the most spectacular natural events along the coast, often referred to as the northern lights of the ocean. When the fish arrive, the males release milt, a milky substance that contains sperm, into the water, turning the coastal ocean a stunning turquoise color. Female herring will coat the seaweed, eelgrass, rocks, and everything else on the shoreline with a thick layer of tiny transparent eggs. The scale of this event is hard to quantify. There can be up to 6 million eggs per square meter. Unlike the salmon, the fish don't die here. After three weeks of spawning, the herring return to the open ocean, and this cycle can occur five to ten times throughout their lifetime. Pacific herring are the foundation of the coastal food web, and there are very few species that don't eat it. The herring spawn is the first big influx of food of the year for a diverse range of marine predators. That includes marine mammals, fish, invertebrates, and my favourite, the birds. Around the spawn areas, gulls gather in their thousands. And just like any area with a lot of gulls, it's chaos. The gulls forage on both the eggs and the fish themselves, and can consume two-thirds or more of the eggs that are exposed on the beach during low tides. You can see that gulls aren't the only bird species that are here. Other birds, like wading birds, songbirds, and ducks also feed on the eggs. Some birds even time their migrations to coincide with the herring spawn, and the herring eggs are used as fuel to get them to their breeding grounds, some of which are as far away as the Arctic. We've been seeing hundreds of bald eagles in this area. Eagles start nesting early here on the coast, so the adults need to be in good condition for this. The abundance of food is important for both the adult eagles with the white heads and the younger eagles who are all brown. While the younger eagles aren't building nests right now, they are still very hungry after a long winter with only little amounts of food. And this is what the herring spawn does for birds. Towards the end of the winter, their energy levels are at a low. This feeding frenzy helps to top them up so they can go on and have a successful breeding season. So a lot of the marine birds that we see in the spring and the summer are only really around because of the herring spawn. Where I live on Vancouver Island, we get a lot of sea lions, and filming them is a lot of fun. Sea lions love herring, and the spawn attracts thousands of them. They're staking out territory on the rocks where they lounge around before diving into the ocean waters to feast on the herring. After they're done feeding, they raft together and continue to just gorge on the fish. Just like the birds, the sea lions head to different breeding sites all along the BC coast. The herring spawn is really important for them. It gives them the fat reserves they need to breed. The success of the herring spawn directly affects the reproductive success and health of these migrating animals. And that's the case for everything, from fish to birds to sea lions, all the way to whales. Like so much on this coast, there's an interconnection between the land and the ocean. The fish spawning event that is perhaps most famous is the salmon run, where we see a huge transfer of nutrients from the ocean to the land. And the herring spawn is no different to this. These nutrients are spread throughout the forest by the predators that feed on them. So for example, if a gull or an eagle eats herring eggs or the herring themselves on the beach, they then deliver those nutrients to the forest by pooping as they fly over. After the hatching period, dead eggs and casings in shallow waters move with the waves and tides. This can deliver the eggs to the intertidal and coastal ecosystems as they decompose, again providing the area with a huge amount of nutrients. Oh, and talking of salmon, Herring are actually a really important food source for the salmon themselves. So that means that a good herring spawn can often mean we get a good salmon run. The importance of the herring spawn as the foundation of the food web means that its impacts carry on throughout the spring, summer, and beyond. Filming the chaos of the herring spawn has been an unbelievable experience, and witnessing this brief spectacle has been so special as it really only lasts for a few days before it's gone. This natural phenomenon is crucial for a healthy ecosystem and a diverse range of life that exists here on the coast of British Columbia.